Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In last week's video, I started cleaning up the front of my house by clearing out a bunch of these tree limbs to get more light to my front yard. I also started pressure washing the house to get all of the old lime wash off that was peeling and did a lot of pressure washing, like cleaning up the garage door and these front pavers. Gave the bushes a trim and we still have lots to do in today's video, so let's get started. Okay, it is officially lime wash day. We have the perfect weather, it's overcast, it's not supposed to rain, so that's the plan for today. But first, I do wanna pressure wash right here around the house because I don't want like water to spray up on the house after I lime wash. After you lime wash, you have about three to four hours before it can get like kind of wet and then five days before like you have five days that you can pressure wash it off but I'd rather not risk it so we'll just do this area right here and then we'll get to lime washing. I get a comment almost every video asking me how I learned to do all of the things that I do. Did I go to classes or am I trained? And I'm not. I have been doing this for a while but it would have been super beneficial when I first started to have today's sponsor, Furniture Playbooks. Whether you're wanting to start a small business or you're just wanting to pick up woodworking as a hobby to do the things like I do, this is such a great resource to have. You can access the bundle that includes over 100 playbooks in PDF form with pictures and text to walk you through furniture builds like tables, consoles, and beds, as well as smaller builds like cutting boards and cabinet doors and drawers. And it also has finishing guides that explain how to protect the pieces that you build, as well as tool guides and info on safety and PPE. They're also a great resource for the business side, which is super helpful to learn how to give quotes and keep track of spending and inventory. So if you guys are interested in these playbooks, I'll make sure that I leave the link down in the description and make sure that you guys go check them out. Thank you so much to Furniture Playbooks for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to pressure washing. Okay, I'm pretty impressed with this little attachment that I got off of Amazon, I think for like $25 or something, because that would have taken me so much longer to do with just the pressure washing head. Now, I know it's still, it's not perfect. I might go back with the pressure washer, the like turbo head on some of these smaller spots, but that is way better and took me hardly any time at all. So the product that I am using is called Roma Bio and it is a lime wash that comes in this kind of like slurry mixture and you mix it one part water to one part lime wash. At least that's the recipe that I'm using because I wanted a lot of coverage. I don't like the distressed look. I wanted an opaque coverage. So I'm mixing that in a separate bucket with a attachment with my drill and then I will use a wide brush to brush everything on. All right, right when I was getting ready to start lime washing, the guys showed up to pick up all of the branches and stuff. So those are gone, which is big weight off of my shoulders. But while they were here doing that, I did start lime washing. Good thing I like pressure washed this, right? But that's okay, I can do it again. So I started lime washing right here. And I don't know if it's gonna pick up on camera. Let me see if I can get a better angle. You can see on this side, it's a warmer white than a brighter white over there. And I really like this softer, creamier, warmer white right here. That's what I had originally wanted. So I'm just doing a light coat over everything because the coverage is really good and I don't have to get down into the mortar lines because I've already done that.
Okay, I am running out of light, so I'm gonna have to stop for today, but it is looking so good versus that. I love the creamier white color. Can't wait to finish up that side over there tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day, and now that I've used both products, the DIY Lime Wash and the Roma Bio, Bio product, um, I have some thoughts. So, this whole wall is finished with the Roma Bio. It needs a few touch-ups, but in my opinion, the Roma Bio is a much better product. It covers a lot better. We'll see about like the chipping and peeling versus the DIY Lime Wash, but I think one of the downfalls of it is the price. Like, it's $250 typically for a four gallon bucket like this. And when I was calculating for doing my house, I thought I would need like four of these buckets because I was thinking in terms of paint. And so I have done all of this and this side, that wall, not above that roof and then all under here. And I'll show you how much I have left of this bucket. Like I haven't super dented it. So I really think I could have done my entire house for one, maybe two buckets for a total of $500, which is not terrible. But I think I spent a total of like $50 on the bags of lime. Plus I did buy the coffee to mix in. So let's say $100 to do the whole house. That's much better than $500 or even $250. But for longevity, for ease of application and coverage, if you have the budget and you're thinking about doing this, I would definitely suggest going with the Roma Bio. I just think it is a easier product to use. I also like that it has more color selections, which is why I added coffee to the original DIY recipe for the lime wash that I did because I wanted an off-white and I still didn't get it quite as creamy as I wanted and this color I think it's the Avorio is exactly what I wanted so that's I if I were to do it all over again that's what I would go with so what I need to finish up today is this wall right here and then just this big wall right here now I will eventually end up doing the sides of the house later, but for now, that's what I'm hoping to get done. Okay, the lime wash is all done and I love it. I love that it's like a creamier white. I love how opaque it is. I think it's looking really good. So now let's talk about this flower bed. It's actually come a really long way. It used to be super overgrown and I don't really know what's going on with this 
plant over here. I think I'm going to add some like fertilizer to it. Hopefully it'll start growing. I mean, you can see that it's green is coming, but just the front is still kind of brown. So hopefully that keeps coming in. We need to add a bunch of mulch. And then also I got this plant, which is um, Lantana. I've had this at my houses before and it hardly requires like any water. <laughs> And so I thought that would be good to go right here because it stays kind of low and it spreads out. So I'll just have to trim it along the outside if it does well right here. So that's the plan just to give this a little bit of color. Okay, flower bed is looking pretty good. And now I wanna work on this driveway. So first I'm gonna use the blower and just blow all of this debris and stuff off. And then I'm going to use that attachment that I used in my last video and kind of scrub everything really well to try to get it looking a lot cleaner. Okay, this little tool that I used right there did a great job at getting all of the dirt off, but not this 
black stuff. I don't know if that's mold or what, but I took my pressure washer with the turbo nozzle and I've been pressure washing the rest of the driveway, which took hours. So still have to do this side. Not looking forward to that, but it does look so much better, so much cleaner. Now that the sidewalk is pretty much clean, just... Okay, now that the driveway is pretty much clean, just a couple more projects. So I've got these expansion gaps in between like different pieces of concrete and they always get leaves and stuff stuck in them. So I did a little research and this is backer rod and I am just gonna take that and put it down in this gap right here and then I'm going to seal it with this concrete product. It's self-leveling and so it should keep things from getting stuck down in there. Okay, I didn't want to have to worry about keeping something alive right here by the door because it's always in shade. And so I grabbed some more of these flowers that I use in the back porch and a foam block. And then I just have it sitting inside of this planter. I think it looks really cute. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys picked up some tips and ideas that you can use in your own yards. And let me know what you think down in the comments. Please make sure that you're subscribed and give this video a like and I will be back next week with another makeover and I will see you guys then. Bye.